Everybody and their mother is still waiting on official PlayStation 5 information, and now rumors are circulating that that event will be held on June 4th with a state of PlayStation 5 reveal, and that event should feature an entire slate of games, we'll go over that, as well as some very exciting PS4 game announcements, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater is coming back and it looks fantastic, and Nexamon Extinction is another game you should have on your radar if you are a fan of monster collecting games, we'll talk that in just a little bit. But first of all, as coming from... WCCF Tech, by the way, of Jeff Grubb. According to Venture Beat, well informed gaming journalist Jeff Grubb, the rumored June 4th PS5 reveal event is going to feature a whole lot of titles. Last month, Grubb claimed that Sony's reveal event is planned for next month on June 4th, and the journalist has now taken to Twitter to say that this event will likely feature a lot of games and they will be shown right away. Somebody tweeted at him saying, Slate doesn't sound promising. My English isn't the best, but that sounds like one game or something as an appetizer, right? Grub responded, putting that worry to rest, saying, should be an entire slate of games a lot. Now, I think this is the best way to do it, especially because I kind of like the idea of the secrecy that the PlayStation 5 has for it, and then you build up the enormous amount of hype towards this one singular event, and you just drop bomb after bomb after bomb in terms of high-quality titles and game reveals that are gonna get people really excited, whether that be a Horizon 2, whether that be Spider-Man 2, God of War 2. These are games that generally the majority of people already know are in development, but if you announce them all alongside the PS5, show off the console, give us the price point, maybe a release date, well, that's just going to increase the enormity of the PlayStation 5 already. I think this console is going to be gigantic. I also think the Xbox Series X is going to be gigantic. I just think the appetite is there for new consoles, even though financially a lot of people are in a difficult time right now. I still think ultimately people are going to end up buying these consoles or there's going to be enough people wanting to buy the consoles that they're all going to sell out really, really quickly. And that's why I've been saying if you're interested in either of them, when pre-orders go live, you should pre-order it right away because those eBay secondhand prices are going to be pretty nasty. But nonetheless, a lot of games being revealed, and that is the imperative. I think both Microsoft and uh, Sony have realized that, that yes, you can have all the features in the world, and that's great, but from a game console standpoint, you're never going to match the feature set that a PC is going to offer, so you need to supplement that with great games, and that's what made the PlayStation 4 such a success. It was the game lineup and it did have a very, very good roster of games. And now, it's not going to be a one-sided thrashing like it was with the PS4 and the Xbox One. It is going to be a lot more competitive. People have to just accept that and accept the fact that Microsoft and Phil Spencer in the background, while this generation was going on, was in an acquisition mode, acquiring a lot of studios, fostering the creation of new studios, and now we're at a point where it is going to be a legitimate battle in terms of great game uh, against great game. I mean... For every Horizon Zero Dawn 2 that you have, or every God of War 2 that you have, Microsoft is going to counter with an Obsidian RPG. They're going to counter with a game like Fable 4, Halo Infinite, Forza. They've got a solid repertoire of games, and those are just a couple of the studios. You're also talking about Ninja Theory doing Hellblade 2. Both consoles are going to have a stacked roster of games. The only thing is the Xbox games are going to be available on PC, so I do question how that's going to impact things. For the consumer, that's fantastic, because now you can play these games on multiple platforms, but as far as just the Series X, uh, Series X's success level, I do think that might hinder it a little bit, but ultimately I do think there is a distinct audience for consoles and PCs, so I still think it's going to sell very well, and I do think it's going to sell out right away, especially because Microsoft has the resources to do a lot of great things with the Xbox, and we know things like backwards compatibility to 360 is going to be there, which might beat out the PS5's backwards compatibility. I don't think it's going to go back to PS3. We haven't heard official word. But right there, that already gives Microsoft a bit of a leg up in terms of marketing the console and promoting it. So they are also very good at offering a lot of features. Game Pass is something that is going to make them a lot more enticing than Sony and PlayStation 5. Just because PlayStation now, it doesn't look like they're going to be adding first party titles to that. Halo Infinite on Game Pass, Fable 4 on Game Pass, Gears on Game Pass, it is going to have a stacked roster of games. So there you have it with that, as far as the PlayStation 5's reveal event goes, it should feature an entire slate of games. Also do want to cover some major PlayStation 4 game revelations, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 Remake have been announced for the PlayStation 4, you could call it a remake, a remaster, this really does come across more as a remake. 
Noting the standard edition will cost $39.99, the digital deluxe version that includes unique content and in-game gear will cost $49.99, a collector's edition that includes the digital deluxe content and a limited run birdhouse deck will also be available for a whopping $100. Noting the original Tony Hawk's Pro Skater series is a big factor in the evolution of modern skateboarding tricks and inspiring many of the pro skaters you know and love today. Professional skateboarder Tony Hawk said in a press release, I'm excited to help inspire a new generation of skateboarders and gamers and existing fans to grow the sport even further. Dropping on September 4, 2020, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 is set to bring back original levels, pro skaters, tricks, modes, and songs from the iconic soundtrack as well as amp up the experience with new ways to play, including online multiplayer. Same Tony, new tricks. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 will feature the full original roster of pro skaters from the turn of the 21st century with a variety of different skaters. These skaters all come with their own special moves from Jeff Rowley's Dark Side Grind to Tony Hawk's Legendary 900 and have learned a few new tricks over the past two decades, including the revert lip tricks and the wall plant, allowing you to pull off incredible combos like never before. On top of that, the remaster will also feature all the original levels from the first two games in the franchise, from the warehouse to the uh, uh, bullring, as well as many of the songs from the original games. I wouldn't imagine all of the songs, just because there are, is going to be inherent licensing issues with that, but hopefully they do try to stay as true to the original game as possible. All of this will be uh, represented in stunning 4K resolution with updated and enhanced graphics running at a frame rate crisper than a perfect 50-50 grind 60 frames per second. That is essential to a skateboarding game and I'm very happy to see that. You've also got Create a Skater and Create a Park uh, Return and their revamp. Rather carve up your own pack with a skater you created. Create a Skater and Create a Park are back with some dope features added in. Create a Park specifically will feature a robust editing suite enabling an incredible level of customization to create the skate part of your wildest imaginations. These parks can be shared online with friends, so that is even better. The community creations are going to be fantastic, and then you can create yourself as well with plenty of customization options, including iconic skating and street brands. You'll be able to express a crazy amount of creativity, so that will be out September 4th, very much excited for that. That's been something somebody or uh, gamers have been asking for quite a while. Also, I do want to highlight Nexamon Extinction. This is one that's going a little bit under the radar, but PQ will release a VEWO interactive developed Nexamon Extinction for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC via Steam this summer. Now, obviously, you can see where this game draws some inspiration from, but it's a return to classic monster catching games complete with a brand new story, eccentric characters, and over 300 unique Nexamon to trap and tame. The world is on the brink of extinction as mighty tyrant Nexamon fight for dominion over humans and monsters. Join the guild of tamers and begin an epic journey to restore balance before all hope is lost. That game is going to be out this summer, so it should be out relatively soon. And that's going to conclude this video. Again, Jeff Grubb noting, we're going to get a slate of uh, game reveals at this June 4th event, so expect a lot of good stuff there. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 has been announced. That looks fantastic. And Nexamon Extinction headed to PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC this summer. That's going to conclude this video sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below thank you for watching and goodbye hey guys we hope you enjoyed the video and if you did make sure to hit the subscribe button and if you're already subscribed do us a favor and hit the bell icon this way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video that's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads and we usually try to upload two videos a day and with the bell icon hit you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video as always thanks for watching